severely hydrated, able to put on 15 and a half pounds, functionally 12% of his body weight overnight. Rules of the bout with his with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Atherberries, Dio Stadi Gabi fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round. Clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim! Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, Golden Boy Promotions presents this next title bout. Sponsored by Tecate Cerveza with Attitude Rockstar Energy Drink. Party like a rock star. Smart communications and Southwest Airlines, the symbol of freedom. Brought to you in association with Top Rank Boxing, Romansa Boxing Productions, and MP Promotions. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the three judges assigned ringside scoring this bout. Adelaide Bird, Chuck Jampa, and Dick Houck. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Jay Nady. And now, 12 rounds of boxing. This is for the NABO Bantamweight Championship. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, official weight, 119, one half pounds. His professional record, 30 victories, including 22 knockouts, only three defeats, one bout even, from Davio City, Philippines, the challenger, Prince Diosdado Gavi. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, official weight, 117 pounds. This 2004 Mexican Olympian now has a perfect professional record consisting of 15 bouts, 15 victories, including nine knockouts. Thomas y Caballeros de Guadalajara, Mexico, the undefeated NABO Bantamweight champion, Abner Mare. Abner Maris has never faced a southpaw in a professional fight. This particular southpaw, Gabby, is one of five on the card tonight. There was a time when you would go five years before seeing five southpaws on a big boxing card. You think it has to do with the globalization of the sport? Are there more southpaws in other cultures? Well, it's always been a tradition, believe it or not, in uh, the Orient. You know, one of the most famous fighters ever come out of there way back about 40, 50 years ago was, uh, is it? Uh, Flash Lord, Flash, Flash Lord, 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 who was a junior lightweight champion. But it's very common, and a lot of those guys are coming from kickboxing backgrounds. Also, but uh, where they stand in the South Pole, stand in the South Pole, saw a lot. And then Larry, you actually asked yesterday, are there any Filipino fighters who are conventional stance fighters? And I think Ray Boom Boom Batista was, incidentally. We've seen a few, but we've seen an awful lot of southpaws. Makes me wonder whether some of them are naturally right-handed and are converted to southpaws. I think, I think that's the case. In fact, most of uh, I've probably had about three southpaws myself, Michael Morrow, uh, Jesse Benavides, and presently Andy Lee. And all of those guys are really right-handed guys. They punch in the uh, southpaw position, but they're really right-handed as well as Bobless Marvin Hagler. Well, this thing of turning around and putting the naturally stronger hand in front is something we're seeing more and more of throughout the sport because of the success of fighters like Moore and Oscar De La Hoya, a natural Pernell. southpaw who fights in a right-handed stance. Yeah. And there are many of them that we could name. And Pernell Whitaker. Yeah, well, there has been a, a revolution uh, since the 80s and with southpaw boxing uh, with Hagler and uh, Whitaker. No, what's great about it is that there used to be a stereotype that southpaws had weak jabs and were basically defensive finesse fighters. Now we see southpaw sluggers, destroyers. Manny Pacquiao, number one, is the main event fighter tonight. As a matter of fact, yeah. technically, you always the saying used to be southpaws were mostly smart technical fighters. 
And when you fought a southpaw, you crowded him, you put a lot of pressure on him, and you threw right hand leads. That's not the case now. They are very aggressive themselves, a lot of them. Meanwhile, here in round number one. On the other hand, we get guys like a Bragamoff. <laughs> Please don't remind <laughs> us. <laughs> I, I had already managed to forget. Hard right hand by Morris. Staggers. Diaz Gabi. Now let's see if Morris can find a way to finish him right here in round one. That might be a little too much to ask for, but the right hand lands again. Up until that point, I thought Gabi was winning the round. Yeah, you really can see the weight this, this scrap, the discrepancy right now. Gabi looks much, much physically bigger. But slower. So much slower also. You're right, Jeff. Then that's the difference. You gotta stay alert. Keep them hands up in there, son, okay? All right? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Gabby, keep your focus now, all right? Don't get sloppy defensively in there, you hear me? I need that good, sharp head movement, all right? Okay, baby. Use the uppercuts, the left uppercuts. That hurts him a lot. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, your dad said you had blood. Here you see Morris hit Gabby with a punch. It really didn't seem like it had that much power, but I think it was probably based on the fact that Gabby wasn't even looking for anything back. His whole mindset was on being aggressive. So the punch had a lot more effect than it normally would have had. And round two begins. Gabby the southpaw in the red trunks. Abner Morris, of whom there are great expectations. Knocks him down with a straight right hand. You just don't like to see a guy gain 16 pounds overnight from yeah. an original weight of 119. It's not healthy. And I don't think he's going to be able to survive because those guys are not trained how to trench and survive. They're going to stand and fight all the way. Two more hard right hand shots and a couple of left hooks. Mares is letting go. Second knockdown of the round. No three knockdown rule in effect. But Jay Nady makes a smart move in stopping the fight. There was no point in letting Gabi risk further punishment. Maris is with uh, the noted trainer we've mentioned so many times before. Nacho Beristain. Nacho Beristain, who is a proponent of of technical boxing. Used to be anyway. <laughs> but he says that he had to teach Maris how to take advantage of the power he was not exploiting. Yeah, I, I first saw him about a, maybe a year or two ago. He was being trained at that time by Floyd Mayweather Senior. I saw him at the gym in Las Vegas. And since then, I guess his last four or five fights he's been with Nacho Beristein. But he's a fundamentally sound basic fighter, and that's all it takes is basics. Now here's the first knockdown. Straight right hand, thudding, down goes Gabi. And, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but I don't think it was a fair test. If a guy comes here weighing 119 and a half and puts on 15 and a half pounds overnight, it tells me he wasn't in shape for the fight. Either that or they were taking him down in weight just to get the fight. This is a showcase fight for a young prospect, and he showed his stuff. And because of the great success that uh, Pacquiao's had here, he's really opened up the door for a lot of the fighters from the Orient. But there's only one Pacquiao. Well, Abner Maris will have some new fans in Mexico and in the USA. After that, two-round devastation of Diaz Gabi. Let's go up to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, referee Jay Nady calls a halt to the bout. The official time, 49 seconds. 
round number two, the winner by TKO victory, still undefeated, still NABO champion, Abner Abner Maris from Guadalajara, now 16 and 0 with 10 KOs. Five foot five inch bantamweight, possibly with a bigger than bantamweight future. Yeah. Compubox number.